So today's presentation will be on Bluetooth and Bluetooth is basically wireless data exchange. So first to start off, what is Bluetooth? So Bluetooth is a short range wireless technology that uses radio waves to transmit data from one device to another. Bluetooth was invented in the 90s by Jap Hartson at Ericsson, which is a Swedish technology company. The majority of patents regarding Bluetooth technology are also owned by Ericsson. So now I'm just going to play a Wherever short your understanding is, let's explain Bluetooth from simple. Sorry. I'm just going to um, play a short video um, just about Bluetooth. Both a complex and an easy to comprehend way. At its core, Bluetooth is the prime wireless technology used across virtually all devices. Bluetooth is just an invisible wire that connects different devices together. And hang with me here, we're going to get more complex as we keep moving. When we say Bluetooth, we really mean the connectivity between devices because this involves both a signal and some hardware. On the hardware side, both devices need to be equipped with an antenna supplied chip that can encode, decode, and transmit data via an antenna. We all have probably tried and hopefully succeeded at connecting a device through Bluetooth. What's really going on is the device that is set to be, set to be discoverable, usually the one with the final output, like a speaker, sends out pinging signals that can be detected by other Bluetooth enabled devices. In other words, it shows up on your phone screen. Once you hit connect and link the devices together, you've just formed a PicoNet. No, this isn't a net used to catch yellow Pokemon. Pikachu net. <laughs> okay. This is actually a micro network of recognizable radio waves communicating back and forth between devices. These waves are short, about 15 meters, so that there aren't conflicting Bluetooth waves all over the place. The signal itself operates within a frequency of 2.4 to 2.485 gigahertz, which falls in the unlicensed scientific, industrial, and medical category. To continue down the path to technical understanding, according to the Bluetooth website, it uses a spread spectrum frequency hopping full duplex signal at a nominal rate of 1600 hops per second. To break that down into words that just about everyone can understand, the signal isn't just on one frequency. In fact, it hops around to all different frequencies, a lot, about 1600 times per second to be exact. This keeps the Bluetooth signal connected between devices and prevents static from occurring due to competing signals. It also helps it be ultra secure, more so than your neighbor's wireless network that you've been secretly stealing. Part of what has made Bluetooth so integral to modern technology is the fact that it requires very little power to operate. The waves have a short broadcast range and data streams are optimized to communicate as little as needed. Newer Bluetooth technology allows low power modes that can stay in contact with Bluetooth devices even when there's no power on at that instant. With this low power connectivity ability, we can have things like trash cans that alert you when they're full or even a toilet seat that alerts you when you forgot to put the seat down. To sum up Bluetooth technology, it's like a virtual cord between devices that allows you to communicate fast, efficiently, and securely. It's the center of what makes wireless technology possible. Bluetooth is magic. So now I am just going to explain some of the uses of Bluetooth. So Bluetooth can be used for many different things, including speakers and wireless headphones, wireless accessories like mouses and keyboards, hands-free phone use in cars, wireless instant file sharing, screen mirroring, tethering devices, for example, connecting your iWatch to your iPhone, wireless home devices like thermostats and lights, as well as more. Bluetooth is integrated into almost all wireless data sharing devices. So some advantages of Bluetooth are that it is wireless, as well as it is very efficient, and it also has good availability which means that it is available on almost every device, no matter what kind of device you have. 
It is also easy to use and it does avoid interference with other wireless devices. Though there are many advantages, there are also some disadvantages of Bluetooth. This includes battery drain. Um, so if you keep it turned on all the time, it can have an effect on your battery life. So just make sure to turn it off when you are not using it. It also can have poor security. And again, to um, stop this from happening, you can just turn it off when you are not using it. It also can have slow data. So Bluetooth is only appropriate for sending files in smaller batches. It may slow down if you're trying to send files that are too large or any large amount of information. It does also have some proximity limitations as well as compatibility issues between devices. Is Bluetooth secure? Bluetooth is more secure than Wi-Fi, but that does not make it completely secure. You could accidentally send people information via Bluetooth that you didn't intend to. And there is also the possibility of eavesdropping when you are using devices such as wireless headsets. So those are two things that you should definitely keep in mind if you are using Bluetooth. And the best way to keep yourself secure is to turn off Bluetooth when you are not making use of it and always double check you are connecting to the correct device and not anybody else's device by accident. So now I'm going to move on to explaining how to enable Bluetooth on different devices. So um, this slide is specifically for Macs. So first you should go to Spotlight and search for Bluetooth and open it. So this is where you are gonna search for it in the search bar and then it will come up. Then a window will open and all you need to do is turn on Bluetooth by clicking the turn on Bluetooth button. So you can see to the right that turn Bluetooth on button, um, it'll then say Bluetooth turned on. Next is enabling Bluetooth for an iPhone or an iPad. So first you will go to your settings. You will then find a few different categories beneath the first, your top name, and um, it's underneath of Wi-Fi. You will select Bluetooth from that menu. And from there, you can just click that white button to click Bluetooth on. As well, you can turn it off by going into this section. And you will know that it is turned off if it is gray as it is in this screenshot to the right. Next is enabling Bluetooth on Windows. So to do this, you will go to the start menu, then select the settings. Next, select devices. And from there, you will just have to choose Bluetooth. Then, as you can see in the screenshot, you will see a small button. And by clicking that, you can switch Bluetooth on or off. Enabling Bluetooth on an Android. So for Androids, you first go to your settings. From there, you will select Bluetooth from the menu. And then once you click Bluetooth, you'll have the option to switch it on from there. Um, and it will tell you if it is turned on or off. Next is connecting to devices via Bluetooth. So as I mentioned before, you can use many device accessories such as headphones, mouses, and keyboard to um, use, utilizing Bluetooth. If you are connecting to a mouse or a pair of headphones, make sure you read its instructions to make it discoverable 
before attempting to connect via Bluetooth. So it's important to make sure that the device will actually show up in the menu when you're selecting a device. So make sure that you follow the instructions that you were given with the accessory. So now, as I did before, I'll be explaining how to connect to devices via Bluetooth for a few different types of devices. So first is a Mac. So you will open your Bluetooth settings again, as you did before. You will then see connectable devices listed with a connect button next to it. So as you can see in the screenshot to the right, um, if I wanted to connect to that mouse, I would just have to click that connect button. The next device is an iPhone or iPad. So as you were doing before, you would go to your settings and select Bluetooth from the menu. You should then see a list of connectable Bluetooth devices underneath of um, the devices section and then you simply tap on the one you want to connect to. So here Macaulay's MacBook Pro is listed in that section and you could just click on it to connect to Bluetooth. Next is Windows. So to connect devices via Bluetooth on Windows, you simply open your Bluetooth settings as you did before. You should then see the connectable devices list with a pair button next to it. As you can see to the right, uh, underneath of the title of the device, you'll see a pair button. And all you need to do is click pair. The next device is Android. So to connect to devices via Bluetooth with Androids, you open your Bluetooth settings again. From there, um, you may either see available devices in the main menu, or you may have to click pair new device first. It just depends on um, if you've already connected before. And then either way, once you see the device you want, tap on it to connect. Um, now I will be talking about how to transfer files via Bluetooth. So for AirDrop, um, this is for Apple devices um, transferring files between one another. So to share files via Bluetooth between Apple devices, you can simply use the Apple feature called AirDrop. If Bluetooth is turned on for both devices, you can simply right click if it is on a Mac or tap the icon, which is a box with an arrow coming straight out of it for a phone or tablet, and then select AirDrop. Your device should then locate other nearby Apple devices and you can select one to share with by tapping on it. Next is how to transfer files via Bluetooth. For Windows, you go to your Bluetooth settings and make sure the other device you want to share with is paired to your device. From this page, scroll down until you see send or receive files via Bluetooth. Then you can select whether you would like to send or receive files. Now you can receive a file or you can select files from your device to send out to other devices. The next device is an Android. Note this may not be correct for your device as all Android devices are different. So generally on the Android tablet, you would locate and select the file you want to send. Next, you would choose the share command, which looks like that icon that is right um, to the right of the second bullet point. And from there, 
um, you go to the share menu and choose Bluetooth. You can then select the device that you want to send the files to. Next, I will be explaining a bit about sharing your screen via Bluetooth. You can also do something called screen mirroring using Bluetooth between certain devices. On devices that run on the same OS, which is Apple devices, this can be relatively simple. Often, this requires the use of a downloaded app. Because using Bluetooth in this method is unique for each device, it is not possible to cover it all in the slides presentation because it is very broad. Sorry, I'm not sure. Um, and then if you are interested in learning how to screen mirror with your devices, you can definitely sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session with one of the Cyber Seniors mentors and they can guide you through your specific, um, the steps for your device. Next is troubleshooting Bluetooth when you are having connection problems. So the first main thing to make sure of is that your Bluetooth is turned on on both devices. This does seem simple, but this is a common connection issue and many people that are having problems with Bluetooth um, may be experiencing it because of this. The second thing that you can do to troubleshoot is turn on discoverable mode. So for certain devices like car Bluetooth, systems and speakers, it is not enough for their Bluetooth to just be turned on. They may also have to be discoverable. And if you are unsure about how this works, you should consult the instructions because there may be a special combination of buttons you have to press to activate this mode. Another thing that you can do is power the devices off and back on because it may just be that you need to restart, restart the device to keep it working. And a few more things that you can do if you run into problems. Um, you can delete a device from a phone and then rediscover it. So if you have connected to the device before and it suddenly won't connect, you can try deleting or forgetting the device and then reconnecting to it as a new device. Another thing that you can do is make sure the devices you want to pair are designed to connect with each other. This is because sometimes devices just aren't compatible and are only designed to connect to a certain kind of device. For example, many Apple products are like this. And lastly, you can make sure the two devices are in close enough proximity to one another. Um, this is because Bluetooth can usually only connect within 10 meters, and if you are too far apart, it will not work properly. 